afternoon, this conference everybody. will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the first finance subcommittee for the RTD Accountability Committee. And it is just after 4 p.m. on September 11th. So um, call the meeting to order. And uh, we'll start with introductions. I think most of you know me. I'm Matthew Helfand, a senior transportation planner with Dr. Cog. And why don't we have um, committee members introduce themselves? Elise Jones here from Boulder County. Uh, Rut Bridges here from Greenwood Village. Dan Blankenship from Roaring Fork Transportation Authority. Rebecca Thanks. White with the Colorado Thank Department you. of Transportation. Just, Lynn just Lynn appointed Lynn. today. Sorry. Lynn Geisinger from the RTD board. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Are there others on the call besides committee right. members? Hey, Jacob. Or Jacob. Hey, Matthew. It's Doug. I just got online. Hi, Doug. Hi, it's Jordan Sanchez from Brandenburg McKenna Public Affairs, um, one of the contract lobbyists for RTD. Shelly Cook this from the RTD board. This is Luke oh, Palmasano, right. City of Aurora. <laughs> Matt Callison, City of Aurora. Is that everybody? Okay, uh, before we jump into uh, refining the subcommittee objectives, um, something that uh, we, we missed doing um, last time because we got so deep into the conversation I'd like to do right now. Um, are, is there a volunteer to report out uh, from, from the subcommittee to the committee on Monday? I volunteer Rut Bridges. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll leave that to me. I second I'll, that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to do it. Okay. <laughs> we had the operating subcommittee earlier today. Uh, since uh, I since we didn't get to make that decision, um, I will so I will um, report out from that subcommittee. Okay, uh, so now I am going to go to a sheet. Here we go. Uh, so many of you will be very familiar with this sheet, at least had, uh, as you've previously seen it. Can everyone see it? Yep. Great. Um, so uh, at the at the last committee meeting, we presented um, a, a starting place for um, for the topics uh, to. Uh, under um, or proposed topics uh, to include uh, for each subcommittee. Uh, since then, uh, based on conversation for, uh, at that committee meeting, I started to make some changes. And then when we had the operating subcommittee meeting earlier today, we made some additional changes after um, conversation. So, um, as you can see on the operating subcommittee, there, there were some changes. Uh, one that I will point out because it's of significance uh, to, um, to uh, this group is um, the, uh, the workforce retention hiring management uh, because that is uh, something that's also um, uh, included in finance subcommittee uh, currently um, uh, but uh, they they rec the subcommittee recognized that um, that that there's a significant impact on operations uh, with uh, workforce retention and management especially when it comes to um, operators and um, other personnel directly involved with um, with operations. So I wanted to point that out uh, as something specific. But uh, we can 
We can dive into conversation about what you see on the screen under the finance committee, and uh, I'll, I'll read them out, and then we can we can uh, dive in and um, and see if if what is currently there is what we want, or if we want to uh, refine it. So uh, the first one, the first bulleted item is use of CARES Act and other pandemic-related funds to support RTD's mission. <clears throat> the next bullet is review of current uh, state audit, including uh, with respect to staff management, retention, and hiring. And oh, this is um, another bullet that was um, handed off from the operations subcommittee, uh, and we can discuss if, if if this is uh, something that we want to take up at, with this subcommittee, a resolution of unfinished fast tracks corridors. Um, then uh, long-term budgeting and finan uh, financial planning, uh, that was added after um, hearing conversation uh, from the uh, last committee meeting. Uh, also financial health was moved from governance uh, to finance based on that conversation, but we can certainly discuss it further. Um, then um, <clears throat> services provided by the district, plans and criteria for expansions or reduction in service, uh, that was also uh, moved from um, operations subcommittee. Uh, uh, they, they passed it uh, to, oh, no, that was moved because of conversation at the committee level. Uh, but we can certainly discuss that as well. And then uh, fair structures and ridership. So um, who would like to if I start? May, if I ask Elise a question, Elise, you and I have worked on some issues here that uh, we would be talking about. And I don't see, this, this looks like the original set that we got from Dr. Cog and didn't have doesn't have some of those other ones on it yeah i think that's exactly right this is the staff list as edited by the full committee at the last meeting and um matthew added some stuff from the governance or sorry the operations subcommittee meeting i don't know matthew if you have the document that rut put together with his comments my comments that might be something that we want to um work off of as as well um and, and i believe i just received that and i'm happy to put that on the screen as well uh just one second let me minimize this so i can access i mean ideally we'll be merging all these ideas into one and then we can whittle it down or yeah let's see i think this is kind of a combination of the, of the one that Elise originally had sent around uh, for all the committees with a couple of additions from my side. And it also so has we are. On it that didn't seem to be on it. There were things from the press release from the governor's office saying these are the things that we want you to work on. And it had the ones that were uh, in particular focused on financial issues. Go ahead, Matthew. So, so I, I I have this on the screen. Um, uh, we can certainly discuss um, which one of these or or all of them that that um, that that we'd like to add uh, to the master list. The floor is open. Matthew, would you be able to put as a comment the the other document you were looking at that's shorter to just have that column so we could see them side by side? Does that make um, sense? It makes sense, but I don't know if I'm technologically savvy enough to to do that. Um, I wouldn't know how to to put them both on the screen at the same time. I think if you just insert a comment into this document you have open and you cut and copy and paste what's in the the other one that oh. may work okay let's see here comment yep. and that'll and give you quite a bit of space to work with go to this document 
and ideally just the finance subcommittee yeah yeah, yeah. column yeah oops Arr. that didn't work very well let's try it from the you bottom. almost had it yep See, did I capture all of it? Well, I could start with that. And it's this column. Oh. <laughs> And then I got to go back. I think that the first one is actually already captured. So you said CARES Act. That's. Oh, yep. is it on there? That one. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. OK. So there's quite a few things that are, I think most everything that's on yours is on ours. Matthew. Well, oh, whoa, what did I just do? That's back hey at least i think that, that the ones that are on matthew's list are also on our list our combined list so we might be able to work from that document instead and uh the only exception to that i would see are the things that have been passed to us by other committees that matthew mentioned uh -huh. um, like the resolution of the unfinished parts of um of fast tracks for example and that's already on the list that you and i yeah it certainly yeah. is <laughs> so that one's in there pretty hot topic i believe i've made it worse well why don't we just go to the okay, one that, never mind. Uh, that's the combined version of mine and Lisa's. and and yeah these are on here but then i guess this could work so we have them up here and we just have to go back and forth okay why don't we if you want we'll run through the ones that uh you had matthew originally and then we'll go to the second list and we'll recognize when we've already talked about one of those all right Does that um, sound and it to you, Elise and, and uh, Dan and Rebecca. Is that a plan? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I see that CARES Act didn't transfer over, so I'll just type that in. So um, we have uh, the, the use of CARES Act and other pandemic um, monies was the first one then review of current uh state audit including with respect to staff management retention and hiring resolution of unfinished fast track uh, corridors oh go ahead there's one addition to that one of state audits there are a lot of other financially related documents that i think that the committee will need to review in order to get a grip of all of the different issues and challenges that uh, RTD is facing. Sure, absolutely. Um, uh, and this this came from the original announcement, but um, the the subcommittee will have um, access to several other RTD financial documents. In fact, most of them are already available. Yeah. Um, so I I I I don't know if we need to list every document no, but not. is there a better way we could state um yeah how red has it Go ahead, in his second bullet yeah all right because the second bullet on our version is almost exactly like the one that you yep. have except for that except other, for and other financial related documents 
And just a note while we're waiting for Matthew to cut and paste is um, the operations subcommittee did flag staff management retention as something related to operations and recognizing that sort of a dual um, responsibility with the finance committee. Finance is concerned about the, the, the revenues to deal with that and operations subcommittee are are uh, in, is interested in the, uh, the operational pieces of that so just flagging that as a shared responsibility yeah i think elise will probably run into quite a few of those things that are yep. uniquely our domain but having ideas from different sides is valuable i think so okay so i I just copied from this document and put it into that master document, which is, I think, what I'm going to continue to do so that we have one master document. All right. So um, the next one was resolution of uh, unfinished fast tracks corridors. Um, the, the subcommittee wanted to look into that. I'm uh, sorry, the, the operations subcommittee wanted to look into that, but recognize that um, that's more of a funding issue than anything else. So it, it, it probably belongs more in, in under the purview of this sum committee. And it's in, in bullet number eight from the Rhett Bridges document. Um, one thing we ran into the operations committee is we got stuck on the word equity, which, um, and so it was easier, it worked better for people to talk about resolution of unfinished fast tracks corridors rather than calling it equity per se, just because um, most people relate to the equity uh, um, title as relating to um, transit dependent populations, communities of color, low income populations, and we didn't want to confuse anybody. So that's why we called it that, but it's, clearly on Rutt's list. Would the subcommittee like for me to replace uh, the language currently on the document with, with the language here? Uh, I'm not sure that the language doesn't match here other than the fact um, other than the think, fact that there is an additional comment about are there potential solutions that might better that might provide equivalent or better mobility on unfinished corridors, which is next to the last one on the on the other list. I feel like the the rut list for has additional details that fall under the heading of resolution of unfinished fast tracks corridors. So mm -hmm. if Detail that's worth saving, whether or not, but I would not um, consider them separate items. That seems reasonable. So we'll, we'll keep the language that's in the master document, but we'll save this document uh, for uh, use by the subcommittee. And, and just recognize that there's two bullets on the RUT document that related are related to unfinished that resolution of the unfinished fast tracks corridors. Ah, yes. Well, there's actually three. Um, that one, <laughs> the one below it, and the next to the last bullet. So, so I, I think I think having the additional details is great, and and obviously this is under the subcommittee's purview, but I, I think for the purposes of of kind of a generating a higher level master list. Uh, I, I'm not sure these these details need to be in that list, but we can certainly keep it with the subcommittee to to uh, narrow our lens uh, as we dig deeper. Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Yeah, I'm okay with that, Elise. Yeah, I think sort of the next meeting of the subcommittee is where we delve deep in trying to figure out what questions we're trying to answer under each bullet and that's where mm -hmm. this detail will be helpful yep okay 
So let's move on. Um, this is something I added based on the conversation uh, that uh, took place uh, at the last committee meeting, um, long-term budgeting and financial planning. I felt like that's something that um, several people observed uh, was missing from the list. And I tried to summarize it. Well, there's also the issue that, uh, that Jared and, and the legislature has, which is the determination of long-term term financial stability of the agency, which is, which is a little different than just planning. I mean, anyone can plan, but the challenge that is the toughest one that we're facing is how do we how do we ensure that RTD uh, really has that long-term financial stability? But again, I think that falls into the detail category. If you want to just leave this as long-term budgeting and financial planning, yeah, and stability is a good good thing to add. Okay, we'll just stick with what you have there. All right, so I will copy and paste this into the master list. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> so the next one was financial health. But that was um, copied and pa uh, cut and pasted from another one of the other um, items from another committee. Let me see which one it was at this point. Oh, um, organizational assessment, um, financial health, human resources, work culture management, and governance of the district, which we had placed under governance. I sort of feel like we captured that in the bullet we just had. Yeah. Agree. Plus the, the one looking at audits and, and other financial information. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just delete this. And uh, we can say that we, we have it covered under this under this text. Got it. All right. Back to the other list. Uh, services provided by the by the district plans and criteria for expansions or reductions in service. So um, I, a lot of this, I think this was taken from the um, operations, but um, people uh, saw that this was uh, a matter of money. Uh, of, of finance, so um, put it into the the, the finance subcommittee. Uh, it, it could, you know, it could it could be in either one, but it, it seems like a slightly better fit uh, because uh, it, services can only be provided if you have the means. So Matthew, I actually disagree with that. I think the operations committee took it back under the rubric of community-based um, service planning. I think, again, almost everything RTD does can only be done if it has the finances to do it. So th there will always be some overlap with finance and particularly sure. acutely so on this one. But I think um, sort of uh, criteria for service and how it is um, developed and, and how, you know the role of local governments is operational rather than financial. So. I, I guess I, I think that piece of it is is um, it, it is prioritized by the operations subcommittee. I wonder if we could perhaps wordsmith this a little bit uh, to make it fit. Um, the community-based service delivery uh, is uh, uh, could be um, enhanced, perhaps, and obviously we'll. Now that I'm thinking about it, we'll have to talk to the operations subcommittee. But um, perhaps this is also a function of uh, uh, their RTD's regular service planning. Well, if I, if I may comment on that, I do think that there are situations in which we may see things that 
in order to make RTD truly sustainable over, over a long period of time, there may be things that we feel RTD should not be doing. Um, I don't want to say exactly what that might be, but you know, there, there could be some structural changes that really depend on that. And that, that's again, where this goes into both the operation side and the financial side. Because you know you have to look at where you will get the most return for you, for investment and still be able to deliver the kind of services that most people need. So I think it's in both committees. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I would agree, and I I like the specifics of services provided by the district, plans and criteria for expansions or reductions. Um, it, maybe add that to to the community um, based service but i think that's um, a nice way of looking at it Good. thanks lynn mm -hmm. all right so we'll keep it in this committee and have a financial lens on it but we'll also include it in uh, so now we're giving some work back to the operations subcommittee <laughs> and um the operations we'll add, subcommittee already feels like it has it, so I think that'll be fine. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not necessarily more work, but more um, definition uh, yeah. by adding okay. the, the, the um, plans and criteria for expansions and reduction in service. I'll just put a semicolon there. All right, so back to our list. <clears throat> this was a big one, um, fair structures and ridership. Um, obviously you can you can see this as a, as a finance thing, as a money thing, but um, it's also, um, it's also uh, operating uh, because it, it, it has a lot to do with equity, as many of us have seen over the last um, few years. Um, RTD convened a committee to look at the fair structures, uh, mainly due to uh, equity reasons, but also obviously due to financial constraints. Yeah, I, I think ridership is is a real critical issue for financial as well, because if we can't do something about the level of ridership that we've got, you know, it, it, considering how far it's fallen, then um, uh, we're gonna have a tough time finding a way to make RTD truly sustainable over a long period of time. And if you look at why RTD even exists, it exists because of the need to, to do something about, uh, among other things, congestion. And part of that is is finding ways to make RTD more attractive place for people to go instead of single occupancy vehicles. Also has a huge environmental impact there as well. So I don't know. I, I defer to my other colleagues on the committee to comment on that. Well, again, I think it's it's um, one of those shared issues, particularly fair. Fair box revenue is completely um, impactful uh, on the financial side of the ledger. It also impacts the operations side, equity, ridership. So they're linked. And again, I I, I don't want to um, be redundant, but I think it's a shared issue. <laughs> um, and the, the finance committee needs to be looking at the financial side of it and other subcommittees will be looking at the other aspects of it, particularly in this case, operations with equity. Agree. So, yeah, so I what agree. I can do is um, maybe put in parentheses financial component here, and then copy this, paste it for operations and 
and put equity. What does everyone think of that? It's okay with me. Yep. It's okay. Yeah. All right. It's good to me. So that concludes the the list of topics. Shall we go through the um, uh, the other document to see if there's any additional topics, high level topics that we want to add? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the first one is a thorough review of CARES Act. We have that covered. Um, the second one, review of recent state audits. We have that one covered. A review of the district's short-term and long-term prioritization of resources to maximize the district's limited dollars for the benefits of taxpayers. Um, perhaps we have that covered as uh, as a general topic. Well, that that's a quote want to directly in? out of the press release of the governor's office and the uh, and the legislature, and so I think it's worth preserving that for that reason. I, I think in the end, when they look back on what we did, they'll want to be able to check boxes and say yes, that was something you at least investigated and and tried to address. I think that makes sense, Rhett. I guess my question is, is it a detail of an issue that we already have on the list, sort of a more sub-detail of looking at long-term budgeting? Yeah, maybe it's that one. That includes looking at how resources are prioritized. Um, again, I feel like um, the longer document provides more detail about what we're trying to um, dive deep on. So mm -hmm. it could be that they're sub bullets. I'm good we... with I'm good with that, Elise. And I don't I agree think we too. Yeah. necessarily have that detail everywhere. Rebecca? Yeah, I was just going to say I think to do some of the larger bullets, we have to look at a review of the district's short term and long term prioritization. That that's sort of almost an action item step to accomplish the the other pieces. It's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Dan, have you got any comments on any of this? I'm sorry, who are you asking? Dan, Dan Blankenship. Well, I, I concur with uh, all the comments that have already been made. Um, I sent out a, just a brief uh, email uh, right before the meeting. You know, I'm I'm kind of an outsider here and, and unfamiliar with all of the issues that RTD is facing and, and the reasons behind the formation of the committee. For me, uh, it would be helpful, and, I, and maybe it's it's covered in um, the review of the CARES Act funding or uh, short and long-term priorities and those kinds of things, but just to get a handle on, on uh, the finances right now and for uh, the balance of this year would be helpful because I think it's really tough to be thinking long term when you're getting memorandums from the uh, the <clears throat> acting CEO saying that you know they're facing 166 million dollar shortfall next year and deferring 114 million dollars in capital projects. Um, and so I, I'm just trying to understand that, understand what the forecasts are for sales tax, which is a major uh, revenue source for RTD and uh, what we're finding is due to sales tax on internet sales for example um, our sales tax so far this year because we had a strong January and February are only about two percent down but yet uh, something must be different over on the front range than in the Roaring Fort Valley. Uh, I'm just trying to understand with the infusion of that CARES Act money this year uh, you know what, what what's driving this forecast of uh, a, a huge deficit next year, and and I think before I can understand that, I, it's really hard to focus on some of these uh, longer term issues. I think, but uh, you know the committee and you all know better. I, I'm I'm for now just trying to get up to speed. 
Dan, uh, Bruce Abel uh, from RTD, who's now leading some, um, I guess, um, special projects that are that are looking into a lot of what you just talked about, uh, has agreed to to brief the committee on Monday. So um, that that might be very helpful uh, for for not only you but for the entire committee uh, to to uh, get deeper into the the, the current uh, fiscal crisis. Thanks, Matthew. I appreciate that. And um, I asked uh, our CFO yesterday or today um, for some sales and, and use tax information that's coming out. We, you know, I've seen it, but um, I think they are coming in better than than we were projecting. Um, and I don't, I don't, I think they may have just gotten July. I'm, I haven't, we haven't seen those yet. I think they're just coming in, but um, I think that that information is probably a good good place to start soon too, Dan. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, Dan, you're the only one that's actually run a transportation district. <laughs> so yeah. we're certainly happy to have you on this committee. Well, thank you. Uh, as I said, I think in the first meeting that we're, we're dwarfed by RTD by a factor of 20 or 30 or 40. and. Uh, it's an amazing challenge, especially under these COVID-19 circumstances to run an organization like that, because keeping the workforce and the passengers safe has gotta be their number one priority. And then to kind of deal with this uh, this review, I think may be uh, pretty stressful for everybody there. Yeah. I, I think that's true. I think it is important also to recognize that this committee was put together before it, essentially before COVID um, to deal with the the issues that RTD has had before COVID struck. Obviously, um, the financials were exacerbated by COVID, but assuming that we actually get through this pandemic, the other sort of structural operational issues that RTD was struggling with before will continue. And, and so yeah. the committee needs to be mindful of the short-term COVID um, impacts and how to navigate this, but our our charge really is more the holistic long-term uh, structure, operation, stability of the organization. So we we shouldn't lose sight of that either. I agree. If my uh, biggest fear on COVID is is whether the people who were our regular riders that are no longer our regular riders, how we get them back. And and I think that's gonna be, that's an interesting and, and somewhat difficult problem. Um, you know, I think that they will come back, but based on what I understand every other transit system in the United States is doing right now, including RAFT is we're limiting capacity. Uh, right. for social distancing purposes and uh, we're having to back up all of our scheduled service so that we don't leave people at the bus stop and I, I don't know if RTD is doing that as well but if people can't rely on the service then they're going to find other ways to get there and I think as capacity starts to open up over time uh, it may take a little time but people will come back. I think the buses and the trains right now are at about one-third capacity with the social distancing measures that are have been put into effect. So yeah, ridership's down 60% too, from what I've seen. That, that's right. And and there is a uh, what they call the extra board, maybe that's what you call it too, Dan. Um, but they uh, where they have people um, where they have buses waiting when uh, you know there are buses that are still doing uh, still going over the social distancing limits. And right. of being on a small bus and 20 on a larger bus, that they tend to be Colfax, Broadway, Federal, you know, those sorts of areas. And and uh, when that happens, there are buses that uh, are on standby to um, to go out and, and add in uh, at the as needed. Yeah. Do we want to keep moving through this list real quickly? We have about 20 minutes left. I'm just mindful of the time. Absolutely. 
Um, so I will get back to reading through the list, and then uh, then after we uh, um, after we go through it, uh, we'll want to uh, possibly see if we can prioritize which topics we want to get to first. So the next one is a review of the district's plans for how to expand ridership. Uh, I think that might be covered already, unless uh, someone has any other thoughts. I think I think that's covered under uh, fair, fair structures, structures and ridership. And ridership. Yep. yep. All right. Then a determination of the long-range financial study. I think that's also covered. Yep, yep under long-term budgeting and financial planning and stability, yep. Um, how the agency can achieve stability and growth while still meeting its core mission. I think that's also covered under the same bullet. Great. Yep. Yep. Uh, issue of bus lines subsidizing fast tracks, rail lines. Uh, how much of the six tenths of a cent uh, has been diverted to fast tracks? I think that's covered under the um, the fast tracks, the the resolution of unfinished fast tracks corridors. I think it is. I do. I think it'll also come up just in overall financial stability because even if you don't build out the rest of fast tracks, you still have a problem with the existing business plan because the operation of the rail lines is is more expensive than anticipated and and so that reality exists with the existing fast tracks but that having been said let's keep moving through i think it i think it will show up automatically um regional equity and the finances of finishing fast tracks or providing equivalent mobility to unfinished corridors are fast tracks monies and base funds uh, generally uh, being spent equitably relative to the counties where they are generated, get accurate info from RTD regarding expenditures to date. I think this is also covered under multiple bullets, but mostly uh, the uh, the fast tracks corridors, probably also the long-term uh, budgeting and financing. Yes. Okay. Um, can, oh, go ahead. No, nope, just agreeing. Uh, can should oh RTDACIC you 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 gave the, I the gave committee us an acronym. An acronym. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Acronym. Let's all use it. I'm tired of typing out accountability committee. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Make recommendations, uh, e.g., to the legislature and governor on the broader transportation pricing context, um, e.g. Uber, Lyft, uh, parking fees. Um, I think that still fits under um, budgeting and financial planning and stability uh, because um, there's there's a lot of coordination there. I know that this has been covered at least a little bit uh, under uh, the, the reimagine uh, plan. Um, it, it could also be um, Covered under uh, the services provided by the district plan. Well, mm, I think what it's, is, what I, I think, think it's fine with include. I, I don't think we should lose that detail because it's actually suggesting that part of RTD's financial context is the context of what's happening with transportation and is RTD the most convenient and cheapest way to travel. Um, well, that depends on if we subsidize parking and you know. Uber and Lyft and other things, and that was the heart of Senate Bill 239. So mm -hmm. I think we should just consider it as a bullet under perhaps financial stability, but we shouldn't lose it because truthfully, I think we're going to want to tell the legislature and the governor this works if the if every other part of the transportation system is paying for its costs, and if they're not, then RTD is going to be uh, disproportionately impacted. And something else that might be, want to be explored under this context could be opportunities for partnerships as well. Right, first mile, last mile kind of things. But, yep. uh, but it, it is accurate that uh, I think we, we need to really 
we really need to go into this and also go into what uh, what Tesla says that they're planning on doing, uh, which is which is really a far lower cost kind of service. Whether when they will come actually be able to deliver it is the other question. Elon Musk has a long history of over promising and being delayed in his deliveries, but he has done some pretty amazing things too. So I think All we're right. fine with this as a detail that that's something that we're going to talk about independently, separately in the committee. Okay. Um, review and recommend potential changes to RTD statutes, such as um, everyone can see this. Uh, uh, I don't know if I need to read every single bullet point. Um, you do not. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we have a life. <laughs> we want to be able to get to it too. <laughs> but but uh, those are again, details that the committee will dig into. But I don't think they need to be in that higher level list. Right. All right. Yeah. And, and maybe it's 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 recognizing that there are a number of obstacles of for revenue generation and operations that exist in a statutory context that, that impact the finances. So we should, again, as Rhett just said, it's detail under one of the other bullets. Let's not lose that detail, but it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be on the, the rest of the list. It's interesting. I gave a, a, a talk uh, in, in uh, uh, an area bordering this part of China, actually, it is now anyway, and the the transit over there is a profitable business in part because they've been in the land development business. And RTD also has a lot of land that somehow some great lobbyist or whatever managed to get it off, you know, off RTD's uh, business business area to actually do something with that property. And I was glad to see you had this this in here, Elise. It's a good question for for the legislature. Yep. Don't tie RTD's hands. All right. Yes, um, RTD as a creature of the state, um, there's certainly uh, some some <laughs> things that we should look into there, and possibly also the uh, the, the governance subcommittee. Uh, the next one: Are there uh, federal state funding sources that can contribute to help provide transportation services to low income populations, e.g. no low fares for low income users rather than RTD shouldering all the all of the cost. I think again, this is a sub bullet under financial planning to look at other revenue sources. Um, All right, uh, next, uh, are there potential solutions that might provide equivalent or better mobility on unfinished corridors? That's so, under the resolution of unfinished corridors, so mm -hmm. check, check. Yep. Yep. And then, um, are there suggestions to how RTD might better manage the COVID crisis and accelerate the recovery of ridership? I think that probably fits under that first bullet. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think we've it gone. Exactly. Through... Also at the bottom, this issue that all the subcommittees need to be looking at, and that's equity assessments and things like that, within the context of the proposals that they may they may make. Uh, so um, everyone everyone sees those. Are uh, does anyone want to suggest making? either one of those three a a full bullet or just keeping them in this document we can i think we can keep them in the document it's just something we have to be cognizant of and and it's a detail that we need to consider as we're working on these other challenges agreed yeah okay all right so um let's see if we uh, at the beginning of the meeting, we selected uh, somebody to report out. Uh, was it going to be Rot? That's what I wrote down. Yep. Yeah, I've been trying to scribble notes. I don't know how well I'll do, but I'll try. Can you send me a copy of the of the version uh, that you're creating, Matthew? Uh, I'll. Um, 
those? I'll send it to to um, the, uh, the uh, everyone on the well. Yeah, yeah I can probably. I just need to have it to be able to work on my what I'm going to say on Monday morning at eight thirty. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I'll I'll just send it to everyone in the uh, on the committee because it's hard to differentiate between the subcommittees and and the other subcommittee will want to see it. Uh, I'll I'll um I'll send it out to to everybody uh, and 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 say that it's the the working document so far. How about Good. that? So That's I'm making great. a note right there. And this reporting out is that five minutes, something like that. Uh, what is what five minutes the reporting out oh oh um yeah roughly probably uh it, that that's probably that probably suffices yeah yeah just a just an overview right. so that everyone's on the same page so i'm 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 taking notes to send out the the subcommittee document Okay, I'll send it to everyone on the committee. And um, so we have, you'll be reporting out. And then finally, uh, before we adjourn, uh, are there any, uh, does anyone want to um, uh, point out any specific topics of the ones that, that, that we've chosen uh, that are under our um, umbrella uh, in the subcommittee to uh, prioritize first? I think getting this uh, financial information uh, would be top of mind for me. I mean, I'm, I'm curious what Bruce will present on Monday, but what further detail we we need there. Rebecca, they actually provided a great uh, wealth of financial information beyond just the audits and links to that. And um, so we'll have to make sure that you get you get connected with that. Matthew, can you make sure Rebecca gets that uh, those links and Remember the stuff that was put together earlier? The links, to, the links to what, I'm sorry? You remember there was not just the audits, but also some uh, analysis of operating costs and uh, things like uh, fare box ratios and so forth. There, there were some links to that that were provided very early on uh, when we were first, uh, it might have been at the second meeting that we had with the larger committee why don't we just send it out to everybody on the finance subcommittee to yeah. to sort of top Thanks of mind because i agree that's where we're going to have to start is you know the financial assessment of the organization and where we where we stand right i agree that'd be great thank you Okay, um, I'll have to look back and see what specifically you're um, you're referring to, but I'm I'll, sure I'll, Doug I'll... knows. And Matthew, I I think I have that link. I'm happy to send it out to uh, to Elise, and uh, I I don't think I have email addresses for everybody else or Rebecca, uh, and then it can get forwarded on, and I'll send it to you too. If you send it to me, I'll, I'll I'll send it out. So that way, we're on the same page for for what we're talking about. Right. And I would also say that there's inevitably going to be more detail than what is in that that we will have to go to RTD and request in terms of additional financial information. But we don't know what that is yet. <laughs> if if yeah. there's any um, current uh, year. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up something uh, to to show you guys. So just one second, because this will be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say if there's any actual revenue and expenditure information for 2020, that would that would be a good starting place, I think. I uh, thought I saw. See where it is. I thought I saw an email today that uh, that uh, staff at RTD had put together a lot of this information and posted it to a website. Um, yep, and that's where I am right now. Is that okay? So, um, and we're going to um, show all the show this to the entire committee along with the new Dr. Cog webpage for the committee. 
um, uh, at the meeting on Monday. So um, this is RTD's page where they have a library. Um, right. And uh, there's some resources here. And I'm trying to remember where. Let's see. Oh, committee yes, request um, library. They put it on the top now. All right. So this is where oh this is where we request. Oh oh no, the documents are here. Good. That's what I thought. Yep. So a lot of the documents are already here. And we're going to uh, show this to the to the entire committee on Monday. Uh, but many of the many of the documents uh, that that we'll need uh, to review are already on the site. And I have a way to log in and request additional documents on behalf of the committee. So if we want a particular document or information on a subject, should we be going through you for that request, Matthew? That's correct, Rut. I believe that was no. that's correct. Um, I'll um, I, I have uh, access to uh, request uh, any additional documents and RTD and us and Dr. Cog have um, a contract with expectations that they'll get the documents to us pretty quickly. Right. And this is a public facing website. So um, you can you can actually go on right now to RTD's site and see all of this. So okay. I'll go up to show you um, it's it's right here. It's it's RTD uh, da, uh, Denver dot com slash accountability dash uh, committee. Matthew, you just send it out to the group. Yeah. Yep. Hey, all. Um, oh, there's a pause yeah. right now. I just want to mention this real quick. So something else we're going to talk about in the full committee meeting on on Monday is um, just kind of the timing and schedule of the the full committee versus the the, the uh, subcommittees and working groups. So I, we're going to suggest at least staff recommendation is to for the full committee to meet less often, so probably once a month, and then the subcommittees to meet more often because you know those are truly the working groups, and we you know we don't want you guys to be absolutely exhausted by meetings. Not that you don't already have too many, um, <laughs> but, uh, but that'll be our proposal. So. So you might want to give us some thought over the weekend about how often um, this this finance uh, subcommittee should meet. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I like that model better because that really means we've got work sessions going on and sharing information and things like that. And I tell you, it's it's going to be the end of the year before you know it. Yeah. Oh, I know it. Yes. In some respects, I kind of can't wait till the end of 2020. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. The I, second I, week yeah, of November I, looms large for me, I have to say. But oh. <laughs> I can't wait till a lot of people are vaccinated and we can get past a lot of the COVID issues. No way we have a vaccine that actually works, that has a pretty high efficacy. Yes, sir. So when, right. is this, uh, when is this subcommittee meeting again? Is that decided? Is it regularly at Fridays at four? Or? I yeah, hope not. <laughs> every two weeks. So as as Doug stated, I think we're we're going to um, uh, bring this up with uh, the full committee on Monday and have a conversation about when to when to schedule the subcommittees, and we're going to recommend that the subcommittees meet more regularly and the full committee meet less regularly. So we'll have that discussion on Monday. Matthew, but I do believe we should we should come up with some standing times. Sure. We do that, though. And we will. We'll send out a little post yeah. right afterwards to get it done. Yep. All righty. All right. Um, so next steps, I will send out an email with that updated document and the link to the RTD site uh, to, the, to all committee members uh, this evening, and then uh, Rut, you'll uh, you'll report out at the at the committee meeting Monday morning. 
Yes, I will. Um, and the the committee has decided to uh, dive first into a review of the audits and the other financial documents. Am I missing anything on next steps? Nope, I think that's it. Nope. All right. Well, everyone have a great weekend. Thank you very Thank much, you. everybody. Thanks for your support and Dr. Cox's support. Yeah. Of course, you guys. Have a great one. And of course. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.